All right. So 200 years ago, the angel Moroni came and visited Joseph Smith as a uh, 17 year old on, uh, well, it was four years later, four years of preparation in which he actually received the uh, gold plates. It took four years of preparation and in that happened to land on Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. The the Jews look at this as a, it's a uh, it's like a new year. The 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 time Adam was created. Um, think of it this way: Rosh Hashanah will be this weekend, and we have three temples being dedicated on the same day over Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. On top of that, what, what, Rosh Hashanah uh, opens up the was it Feast of Trumpets, the the blowing of the shofar, shofar, the the gathering in, the time of preparation, because ten days from there you have Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, Yom, Yom Kippur. <laughs> and that is the Day of Atonement. It's hot. I love popsicles. Um, oh man. Hits the spot. But think about that. There is a preparatory time for the preparatory time. <laughs> it took a young Joseph four years preparation before he could receive the plates and in that four years time he dealt with many difficulties in fact the whole thing that brought him there was that he came in prayer as a 17 year old having no other visions or manifestations since he was 14 so about three years and in that period of time it, to me, it, it's like a parallel to, to Daniel. When Daniel is praying on behalf of his people and seeking for uh, forgiveness and for the people, and and when will we be when will we be led out of captivity again? And it's at that moment when he kneels down to pray, when the Lord sends forth Gabriel. Noah, who, who comes forward out, out of the presence of the Lord straight to Daniel. To me, th that uh, angel Moroni coming forth is essentially, it, it echoes that very same thing. And it, it's just beautiful to me. But it took, it's been 200 years. And from that 200 years, Joseph Smith was given warning. He was visited three times in a single night and then visited every year at the same time until it fell on Rosh, Hash, Rosh Hashanah when he was able to retrieve the plates. And in that three years time, and in, in that warning and teaching period, those that period of instruction and preparation, he had to overcome, rise above those temptations, challenges, things like that. E even being admonished and rebuked and, and shocked at time. And uh, if you saw Sherry Dew's talk, I did a video um, uh, on her talk about how the Lord's coming, how that celestial preparation and the culmination of that is shockingly close. The, the, she was speaking to, to women and how that celestial preparation and that need to be where we are able to be 
may be shockingly close. It was talking about celestial preparation for women. Women, another term, another way of also referring to the church through scripture. But at Sister Holland's passing, President Nelson comes and says that that was a celestial woman. And I'm guessing that that came shockingly close. That that was a shocking experience. But she achieved that celestial woman. She became who the Lord prepared her to become. Shocking because it's um, not always because it's unexpected. Sometimes it's unexpected. But it's it's also exciting. And um, even if we're expecting something, it still can be shockingly amazing for us. But that period led to uh, Rosh Hashanah. It's like the new year. They celebrate Adam. That, that's when the breath of life was given to Adam. The spirit, what, whatever it may be. And they also look at this as, well, before I get to that, one thing I like to liken with this is what Bruce Porter had, had uh, talked about concerning the Axis Mundi. The Axis Mundi is the point of creation. It's the temple. Essentially, it's the temple. And it's a, a point of matter or land being brought out of the waters of chaos. A point where the Lord can stand and create all other things around him. Um, and we look at our celestial bodies and we orbit and are, are according to the laws that are there that has that, that the planet orbits and obeys and was created around the sun. Possibly, you know, th there's other people that have more literal interpretations. I'm purely talking about Axis Mundi and points of creation and how things are governed. Governed by a greater power, a greater light, uh, a greater ordinance. Anyways, um, uniquely, we have three temples being dedicated these three axis mundis. And it's funny because if you look at ancient builders and uh, sacred geometry, uh, uh, Masonic um, things, and I don't think that it, it's bad. I, I think that there's some, there's purposeful things in here, but they essentially are capturing a moment of the celestial glory, a moment of celestial time. It's being captured in a moment into that temple. Because the celestial bodies, they move on, they continue on, they, they, they keep going, they, and it leads up to something else. But each temple is like capturing that moment, that area, that place. And and it's melting now. But at Rosh Hashanah leads, it, it initiates the, the shofar, the, the feast of trumpets, <clears throat> the, the angel in the midst of heaven, blowing his trumpet, calling all and saying, this is the time, this is the time prepare because in 10 days is Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur the day of atonement where the bridegroom 
does come by where the gates are closed. There is a cutoff point. There is an end time. And we're there, even at the gate. And the winding up scene, the winding up scene when we're selling off all the assets of a business and taking the profits and redistributing it out to the those who helped the organization or program. So we break even and all those who are no use. Business goes on as usual and it's a very quick ordeal. And there's usually one outside source that oversees it. And usually only administrators know what's going on. And we're told we are in that winding up scene. 40 years ago, we had prophets saying, we look forward to that winding up scene. And here we are. And it's happening fast. So that four years of preparation 200 years ago, that was initiated 200 years ago. And that trumpet sounds for 10 days. Does that translate to anything to us? Is that going to be a 200 year anniversary for us? I don't know. Get yourself a popsicle. This one's getting my hand sticky because it's melting so much. But. Oh, Day of Atonement. Where. And then there's a time where. We do no servile labor. My goodness. Is that when missionaries are called home? And the Lord starts preaching his own sermons? It certainly seems like he's doing that. Anyways, have a good day. Um, I really want to go through this stuff, but I only get like 10, 15 minutes. I've already gotten a couple texts <laughs> saying, get back in here. Um, so... Take care. And another thing, or at least in conclusion, we were at the cusp of it. We've been led up all the way up to this point. We've had the Book of Mormon. Joseph, we can see Joseph's preparation and time and overcoming these challenges in his own life and rising above them. These are things we've been asked to do is overcome the world. It wasn't until then he was allowed to obtain the gold plates. And I'll tell you what, we're going into the Book of Mormon this year, this next year, but we're ending with New Testament. New Testament and the Book of Revelations. Look for the Book of Mormon. Look for the visit of the angel Moroni. Look for, look for that uh, as we close with the New Testament. Then as we celebrate Christmas, recognize the patterns and how the nativity story teaches us and testifies of the Christ, Christ's coming, the restoration, and his second coming. It is absolutely beautiful. The best preparation we could possibly get. Oh, as we go into the Book of Mormon this year, we have so much additional scholarly stuff that has even come out in support of the Book of Mormon and, and the, the translation process. Even just, was it yesterday? Today. Today, Brother Jerry Grover, a geologist with a, a very keen insight and, and uh, interest in ancient languages, uh, I did a video on the characters document. Go look at that. that. That's some of his work. And I put in his publishings in there. But also just look him up. He he, he uh, did a video today on another channel. I can't remember what it's called. But we're getting to the point where there's just so much knowledge and understanding and context for understanding biblical scripture and the Book of Mormon that it's it's just very eye-opening if, if you've seen the church logo see all those lines the decorative it, it, i don't believe it's decorative everything is purposeful every design everything 
and, and I've always looked at it kind of like, oh, these are veils because they're different shades and they're crisscrossing. It also looks like the the <clears throat> the, the the pattern that we see when we look at the solar eclipse um, as they go across different places. I haven't m matched it up where it, with everything. I'm sure if we did a mirror match like the Egyptians did with their stars, we would probably get that because so uh, as above, so below. Where we look up at the stars, and we see a constellation, and then we draw it as we see it. For them, they do the mirror image of it. <laughs> and so some of the things can be difficult to identify and see. And I think that's something that we could probably recognize in, in uh, probably ancient Nephite writings too. Maybe, I don't know, speculating. Oh my gosh. <laughs> But this is just amazing. We're going into the Book of Mormon. We've never had as much knowledge of the Book of Mormon as we do now. We've been under condemnation. Will we finally have that condemnation lifted as we recognize this, the 200th anniversary of the angel Moroni visiting Joseph, that being testified and spoken of in Revelations as we end this year. Sing the Nativity story, even through the Book of Mormon, and then studying the Book of Mormon, almost with new eyes, new insight, new understanding. Are we finally going to no longer be under condemnation? Is this our preparatory period of receiving more because that character's document that was translated and I read off in, in my one of my previous videos that seemed pretty dang accurate uh, there there may be changes in word choices and it was likely given in a King James style because that was how we receive it L look at King Lamoni and how Ammon speaks to him uh, he, he doesn't use his language. He, he, he learns what King Lamoni calls God and says, that's God. So it speaks to them in their language. We see the same thing with the, the Book of Abraham, the facsimiles. Everyone's so critical about it, saying, that, that's not what it says. Egyptologists say this. But uh, that's changed. We also see the same depictions in Mesopotamian depictions but this is simply Abraham learning a language telling his story through their writing style through their understanding there's no hieroglyphics for the for his stuff <laughs> and and people criticize that oh Anubis didn't look like that blah, blah blah but then you look at the Mesopotamian one that is identical I've actually looked him up. It's it's fascinating. And I'm like, it looks like that. It looks like he, he's taking what he understands from Mesopotamian and, and from these guys and putting it out to the best of his ability. He's speaking, he's speaking the language. Um, but with his understanding. Because when we when we look at say a non uh, member of the church, someone say an agnostic person and they I look at something and and, and rule it out to be just practicality and, and and natural things and they're not being any god whereas we look at something and we say yes this is from god and it is for these purposes well scholars would say nope nope that that's not what it said that, that's not what it is oh yeah my goodness, people. There, there, there's so much there. I can't wait to do my video. Sorry, I'm just popping out for a quick video and uploading it. Then I'll go back to cooking and, and changing diapers. But this is... I'm just trying to squeeze out as much as I possibly can and hopefully in a way that you understand. But this is so exciting. This is leading to... Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. We are being led to the Day of Atonement before the Day of Atonement 
the Lord finds his servants. The Lord takes his people who have taken his name, who he has sealed. He has had sealed to him. My goodness. And we see some, if these rabbis and, and priests, evangelicals of all these different religions, if they had the understanding and insight that we did, my goodness, it, they could probably expound our knowledge um, to an extent, you know, and and hopefully, hopefully there's content, hopefully when things are unraveled fully, people will start searching out more and more and more and they'll find things like this video that will lead them to, okay, perhaps I need to look into that source. Perhaps I need to realize that I may have a paradigm shift. Perhaps I need to take down some of my walls I've put up and, and blocked in my heart or take away that prejudgment because that judgment which they put on Joseph Smith, the scriptures, us, that they will also be judged by. And so I pray that their hearts are softened. Part of the Lord preaching his own sermons, in part, does soften the hearts of people. They will go one way or the other. And we're there. Just let's do the best we can to entice peacefully through, through invitation, love, and sharing that they will, that their hearts will be softened and will come to a better knowledge. Not only that, but they will come and bring their family history, their knowledge of scriptures, their history, all of that, and it will only enlighten us further because we do have that guidance and doctrinal principles that are already laid out. And when we have that track and they understand that, my goodness, how much, how much can they add to that for, for all of us? Anyways, I'm excited. Love you guys. Take care.